One uh, Myths of the Cherokee by James Mooney. One cannot help but be drawn to the myths found within the middle segment of this book and after quenching the palate with some fascinating anthropomorphic tales, a sincere desire is kindled to read from the beginning. Mooney's initial chapters consider issues such as geographic territory, the language and its dialects, and conflicts with neighboring tribes over time. The tales are divided by groups of animals, birds, and cosmologic myths. The format certainly shows signs of being written in the la late in the last century, but this is made up for by in the direct documentation of Cherokee native speakers weaving their tales. I hope to specifically address in this paper some of the folklore I've read and place these stories into the context of intermarriage with and contributions of the Cherokee people to current American society. Firstly, with regard to assimilation into white culture, Mooney asserts that from the time of the separation of the Cherokee as a faction that split off from the Iroquois and their subsequent move southward into the land of what the Cherokee refer to as the Moonide people, very small, white-skinned, and nearly blind people whom the Cherokee quickly disposed of, and Cherokee were far less conservative with regard to tradition than their northern brethren. Mooney proposes that this is quite possibly why the two groups diverged. He also mentions that long before the coming of white influences, the Cherokee were becoming less strenuous in matters of fasting, self-denial, and rigorous spirituality. They were more influenced by the need of, for subsistence off the land, literally referred to as making a living, and also incorporated festivals and in celebration into their everyday lives. According to Mooney, their civilization was already eroding or evolving, depending upon how one looks at it. It is significant that relations between the Cherokee and neighboring tribes were highly contentious, so it is unlikely that many matches other than perhaps to strengthen political alliances could result in new genetic material being introduced. The large territory inhabited by the Cherokee and distances between townships support this idea, as well as giving rise to differing ling linguistic dialects. Most intermarriage with whites with Scotch, Irish, Scottish and Irish settlers or traders. In the back country. Sequoia's father was German, and it was the German pacifist movement, such as the Moravians, who were the, who the Cherokees first encountered as missionaries in Georgia around 1800. It is mentioned that the central Cherokee lands remained more conservative and were less inclined to intermarry as opposed to those villages that lay on the outskirts of their land. It is also mentioned that many of the first schools were established for these intermarried families and their descendants were often highly influential as leaders within the tribe. White settlers were not the only people with whom the Cherokees intermarried. Africans are also part of the picture. There is a tale about these racial relations, although the exact meaning is a bit ambiguous. The black man invented the train, but it was originally a toy on a wooden track. The white man came and wanted it, so he killed the black man and took it and made it into a large locomotive. This tale reflects not only the dominance of the white man over the black, but the Cherokee recognition of this dominance. There are at least two variations of the tortoise and the hare in Cherokee lore. 
One involves a terrapin and a hare. The other involves a hummingbird in the place of the hare and a crane in the place of the tortoise. They are both they both circle the globe in order to win the hand of a young maiden, and while the hummingbird must sleep at night, the crane flies persistently ever forward. Even though the crane wins, the maiden refuses to marry him because he is too ugly. Another tale involves trickery in the familiar form of the tar baby story. Although it does not, it does involve a rabbit. His tar opponent is in the shape of a wolf guarding a well that the rabbit s steals water from after refusing to help the other animals dig it. Another version of the same story takes place with a fox in place of the rabbit. The briar patch tail is switched to a turtle outsmarting a group of wolves who throw him into the water. Most tales have a moral purpose such as encouraging people not to be not to steal, be lazy, or be deceitful. But many other tales involve odd relationships between Cherokee women and animals. Perhaps these mismatched pairings say something about intermarriage also. For instance, there is a tale about a woman who married an owl. There were no men in the family, and the mother advised her daughter to marry a good hunter. A man came and assured them both that he was a very good hunter, so the couple married. Each day, the man would go out to the field, but when they looked, they couldn't find him, and at night, he only brought home very small pieces of meat. The mother went to spy on him, saw that he became an owl, and told her daughter. One version has the daughter declare she refuses to be married to a lying hoo-hoo. Another version has the mother-in-law kicking him out of the house. Yet another tale involves a bear and a woman. It is my favorite story and one of the most original in that it only it and a few others involve resurrection from death. A man went hunting for a bear but the bear spoke to him and invited him to the townhouse of the bears where he saw every kind of bear imaginable. Afterwards, he went home with the bear who promised him a lot of food when, which the bear magically produced. The man stayed with the bear for a year and began to look and act like a bear himself. Finally, the bear told him, that a hunting party from the man's village would come that day to kill the bear and skin him. After they had killed him, he wanted the man to cover his blood with leaves and look behind him as the hunting party took him back to the village. This is exactly what went on the, that day as the medicine bear predicted and when the man looked back, he saw the bear rise up from the leaves and go back to the cave. The man said to the others that when they got back to the village, he needed to be locked in the house for a week so that the bear nature could leave him. And so they did this and told his wife that he needed to be left alone. She was impatient. And they tried to keep her from visiting him. But on the fifth day, she finally won out and got to see him. The man had not yet lost his bare nature. And so he fell dead. But she did not, she had not waited for the metamorphosis to be complete. Other resurrection tales are similar. Only they stress obedience of children rather than spouses. Such as the tale about the origin of game and corn in which a large family always has plenty to eat and the children became curious where the food comes from. So they follow the parents. The father turns over a stone to release one animal at a time to kill for meat. But when the children do the same thing, they let all the animals go. They also spy on the mother who goes to into the house and shakes corn from her body but she catches them spying on her and tells them that they no longer need her, so she will die. 
they should drag her body on the ground and the corn will sprout up from the marks on her body. They will have to save some kernels and plant them every year. The father also dies because he is no longer needed and the parents are reunited on the edge of the world. The children can visit the parents, but only for ceremonies, and then they must leave for this other world. It is interesting version of the Garden of Eden story that results in exile from a life of plenty and the rather results rather in the work ethic of individual toil and responsibility. Uh, this book would be worthwhile for anyone wishing to explore traditional Southern folklore or for changing the attitudes of Cherokee society over time. I sincerely enjoyed reading it. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it. That was my take on Myths of the Cherokee and Sacred Formulas of the Cherokee by James Mooney.